Hi everyone, it's Tim here from Peace Game and I'm joined by Chris uh, Thurston, who's one of our staff writers. Um, we're here to talk through one of the dungeon run-throughs that Chris did while he was uh, out in Seattle with NCSoft. He played through one of the uh, main dungeons. What's the dungeon called, Chris? Ascalonian Catacombs. Okay, so we're going to go through the Ascalonian Catacombs. Um, we'll start off with a cutscene, um, which kind of gives you a little bit of introduction as to what the kind of background of the dungeon is. And then we're going to talk through the main dungeon, um, some of the boss fights, some of the mechanics, and some of the kind of more interesting things. Um, Guild Wars 2 plays a little bit differently from quite a few MMOs, so um, it kind of this fine detail might be interesting to you. Yep, and uh, we should be giving you the option to skip ahead to boss fights and things a little later yep. in the video. So uh, now we're going to watch the first cutscene. Enjoy. You're not the reinforcements I expected, but you'll do. That fool Norn Air has stirred up the ghosts down here. Let me brief you. This place has a history, and I don't want your ignorance getting us killed. This was originally Charland. The humans pushed us out and built Ascalon on top of it. Over 200 years ago, we took our land back. King Adelburn watched his soldiers panic as we breached the city gates. Facing certain defeat, the doomed king refused to surrender. Retreat is not an option. Adelburn smashed his ancient blade, Magder, and cursed Ascalon. You will not abandon me! The blast incinerated the attacking leader and turn the defending humans into vengeful spirits. Never never. The ghosts see the living as invaders. They show no mercy and no weariness. Only blind hatred. Battleburn's hatred. And now, air's gone right into the dead king's lair. What a mess. We're going after her. She's causing trouble, and I don't want anyone dying because of her foolishness. Okay, so um, you've just entered the dungeon. It looks like you're playing as a giant cat person. I am right? a giant cat person who's also an engineer. Yeah, the uh, the char are the giant cat people. They were villains in Guild Wars One, and you probably just noticed that cutscene was very much the backstory of the beginning of Guild Wars One. Okay, so who? What um, other characters and classes are you playing with? I can this see. This is a, a weird group. We've got three mesmers who right. are kind of like uh, illusion-based casters. Me, an engineer, and a guardian who's a kind of melee character that can also do a bit of healing, a bit of tanking. Um, there are no class roles in Guild Wars, so it's worth pointing out. That I was, was going to say because who, like, who's the tank? Who's the healer? There aren't any. Right now, I'm confused. Okay. So, um, no, seriously, who's who's doing the healing? At least. Uh, no one is doing the healing. If people heal themselves. Uh, everyone, if you look at uh, number six on my action bar, that's my healing ability. In my case, that is a potion that I can drink or I can throw at my group to give a random buff. You'll see me do this a few times. But every different class has a different healing ability or several that they can swap in and out. So you're kind of responsible for your own health a little bit. Everyone can res everyone else if anyone goes down. But there's no dedicated healer at all. Right, okay. And who, who gets the aggro? Everyone. Right. I don't understand. Explain. Okay, so it's on the group to manage, you know, where the damage is going at any given time, and right. in different circumstances, it's maybe more useful, depending on how your character's built, for you to be taking damage or for someone else. So the guardian's kind of the obvious choice you can see, and they're a two-handed sword. Yeah. Um, but I've just put down that firewall, and when everyone else's projectiles are going through that firewall, they're catching fire. So I've kind of switched into a DPS role, my flamethrower, but I could easily switch over to my dual pistols thing and do a bit of crowd control, etc., okay. etc. So, um, so is there still things like taunts? Can I, um, if I'm playing as a, um, as the like two-handed sword guy, can I taunt people to bring them off? A I won't say there isn't an ability that doesn't do that, but it's far more based on debuffs, as far as I can see. So you know there are blinds, cripples, things like that to slow down enemies. Right. You're, you're more likely to be controlling enemies using, um, using debuffs than you are to be you're trying to force them to attack one person as opposed to another. Okay. As far as we could tell, it actually makes a lot more sense to avoid any one person taking too much attention at any given yeah. point. Yeah. So you want to spread the damage out. A little yeah. Bit. I mean, as they will tell you generally, and you can read about this on the site, they don't want you to ever feel like you have a fixed role and that's all you can do, and the only interesting thing that can yeah. happen then is you could do it wrong. Um, so, you know, here I've just thrown down a, a glue patch that will slow down enemies for other people to pick off. But that's me kind of then dropping into, I guess, a, a crowd control role, support yeah, role. Yeah. But I've also got my rocket turret off to the left, which is doing loads of DPS. Because the interesting thing is that you've only actually got, um, what, 10 abilities there? 
At any given point you have 10, yeah. And can they be swapped? So the way Guild Wars used to work is it was essentially like a Magic the Gathering style card system, mm -hmm. wasn't it? Where each ability was, um, you could collect lots of them, but you could only have some active at any one time. Are you free to swap these abilities in and out during Within the dungeon? Within particular, okay, so I'll explain how it works. Your yeah. first five are your weapon skills. That's based on the weapon you're holding. At the moment I've got two pistols. So the first three are my main hand pistol, the second four and five are uh, my offhand pistol. Right. Um, if I put a shield in my offhand, it would change four and five. Okay. Now, unless it's occasionally, um, I switch over to a flamethrower, which is an engineer exclusive thing, um, which changes my first five abilities completely, because it's a completely right. different weapon. Now, number six is always your healing ability, and every class has two, uh, two or three okay. or four of them. Um, seven, eight, nine are utilities, so they can sort of fill a gap in your weapons. Right. So, so my flamethrower is actually my number seven. Uh, and then zero is your elite ability, which is kind of like your longest cooldown. And in okay. my case, it's a supply drop that lo drops loads of turrets and um, health packs and things like that. Okay. So right now you're kind of fighting just um, kind of basic trash. How hard were they? Um, there's a lot. Th these these guys have a, a big chunk of health, um, and they tend to cooperate with each other. So we've got a caster at the back there, and I think a warrior or a monk up front. And prioritizing targets is is really important, but. This mode, I should stress, is story mode, which is the, f the first time you encounter a dungeon, it will be in this mode, um, where it's d designed for any kind of um, yeah. sort of random group to kind of pick up them and, okay. and get through it, even if it is tough. There are some tough boss fights later on, definitely. Uh, this trash stuff wasn't too much of a problem, but we did have a weird group. Three Mesmers is unusual. Yeah, okay. Um, right, so how long is it, are the kind of trash packs um, before you get to the first boss? In this dungeon, yeah. um, I guess the first mini boss is only about uh, a couple of minutes from now, and then okay. the first proper boss is a little bit later than that, maybe 15, 20 minutes after that. Um, but you'll kind of make more sense when you see how the story kind of pans out. There's, yeah. if there is a point where you're asked to choose a boss first, and we kind of went in a particular direction. Okay, so the so the group you're with is, um, and they're all developers, aren't they? They're all. Uh, they're no. all um, okay. So there's um, the the other char, the female char you see running around. Yeah. yeah. That's one of the developers. That's Rob, who was showing us through the dungeon. Um, everyone else in this list is uh, sort of various mix of journos, community types, and, and uh, okay, like. okay. I so, thought, um, but they seem to know what they're doing, which is unusual for well, the uh, press. Event. Yeah, well, I think a lot of us <laughs> have played a lot of the game already. We'd all been in the previous beta weekends, okay. and we were playing new characters. But uh, we were leveled up to level thirty. This is a level thirty dungeon for this. Uh, okay. um, but we'd all played the character up to about level ten to learn the main. And, and you and you actually kind of felt the confidence in that situation to. Um, well, I mean, engineer is very much my kind of class because I'm a sort of technical. I'm a, I, I like technical classes. I like shamans in, in WoW, and I like right. uh, imperial agents in, in Tor for that reason. Um, so it's very kind of gadget based and situational. But then the whole game's kind of like that. Yeah. So um, it really does come down to like you're saying about class roles. Really, it comes down to mastery of your class. Yeah. So you know, if you if you're good at one particular thing like crowd control, then you spec your class to emphasize your own skill yeah. as opposed to learning what it is your class is good at. It kind of works the other way around actually. So, but um, one other thing before we kind of move on to the boss, um, mm -hmm. I can see lots of buffs and debuffs. Um, does each kind of class come with a buff that they can apply or is it something a bit more complicated? Um, it, specs very, it depends on how you build your class and what weapons you've got equipped. Um, for example, you know, aside from this dungeon I've been uh, playing a bit of the Thief and the yeah. Thief can spec to be like have area blind attacks by creating smoke bombs and things or can be very good at adding bleeds, stacking bleeds on enemies and damage over time or can be very good at paralyzing enemies right. depending on which weapons you choose and how you decide to play. Okay, but, um, but so I'm assuming that um, on this left hand side all the um, all the blue icons about, uh, next mm -hmm. to the players' names are buffs, buffs yeah. and um, I can, so yeah. how, are they, how are they being applied? Is it so the the purple one that looks like a little fortress? Yeah, that is the actually uh, realm wide buff. That's because our, at this point our world, our server was winning in world versus world okay, combat. Cool. So right. that's the flat buff everyone gets because we were winning. Yeah. Um, the blue ones on the guardian are the kind of guardian self buffs. Right. Yeah. Um, and a lot of the other ones are temporary buffs based on moves. I obviously can tell you what all yeah, of them okay, are. And yeah, red yeah. ones are all. Are all debuffs? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, I'll tell you what. Let's um, let's skip to the first boss. Now we've seen plenty of um, plenty of trash. Um, great. Well, actually, we're just about to come up on a trap oh, room. So here you'll notice the spikes coming out of the ground, and Ooh. that guy's just gone down. You'll notice there's a red circle forms right before the trap comes up. So here we're actually yeah, resing him to get him back up, but we're going to try and move really quickly around the outside of the room to kind of beat the traps around the corner. And there's a few ways you can do this. You can either rush it and really hope for the best, or you'll see in a second there's a group of chains on the wall, and we managed to. Just a minute, as soon as we stop getting murdered by spikes. That's me throwing down a, a health thing for that uh, for my fallen comrade over there. Not way too late. There's some chains that I'm running towards now yeah. in the corner. By pulling them and getting past this boss here, we uh, actually disable the traps. That's a, that's a that's sort of 
I guess the equivalent of a sort of elite ranked enemy, um, okay. so a mini boss. Yeah. Okay. But, um, so I saw some boulders on the ground. What are they? Two. Um, um, okay, boulders are in one of several different kinds of environmental weapon. Um, you can pick up things off the ground. You'll notice I do it now. I think okay. no, I don't actually do it in a minute, and um, it will change my action bar again because a boulder is <laughs> a weapon like any other yeah, to right, throw okay. rock, you know, and, and anything yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. And there's loads of things like that. You can pick up sticks and bash them over people's heads. In pubs, you can break you can, bottles. Like and thieves can pick pickpocket weapons as well. Is that right? Yeah, the thief has. Um, uh, basically the ability to teleport to the, an enemy and steal something and it gives you like a random weapon so yeah. it could be like a shiv so you can stab them it could be like I an air effect poison or something like that I think in an event I played as a thief and I stole some feathers from a bird and then used the it as top. a an accuracy debuff or something um, I don't know I think I just threw them back at him going I don't want your stinking feathers oh, okay. Um, so okay so this looks like, I, I've got to say, there doesn't seem to be much kind of strategy here other than hitting really, hit, really hard. Hit the guy. I mean, there's a lot of focus on individual strategy. Like, it's... it's, it's so it's more like case, kind of knowing your rotation and... Sort of, yeah. And also knowing how you're most useful in a given circumstance. You know, if we're fighting lots of little mobs, you'll know I'll switch over to my flamethrower and things like yeah. that. And how you can best support people. I think in this particular case, it doesn't help that we have three of the same class. Yeah. Um, who are all kind of... Um, and this was very technical. They're all shooting purple lasers. Yeah. So, um... I, I saw some someone picking up loot then. Um, what, okay, before we do that, mm -hmm. uh, what's gone on with the chains then? You have to just pull the chains. And someone open? managed to actually during this fight run over and pull the chain, which disabled all the traps on the floor, ah, okay. which is how we managed to get away with that fight. Yeah. Although we would have been, we would have okay. been trouble. So the loot, mm -hmm. the thing that um, you said a little while ago is that there's no kind of there is no loot. There's just kind of. Well, there is loot, but there's no loot requirement. Okay, right, in okay. World of Warcraft, if you don't have tier whatever gear, you can't do tier whatever content. Yeah. you just cannot. The, the you know, or you have to do yeah, other you content. Out the you've locked yourself out. Or, yeah. um, in in Guild Wars, there's absolutely loot, but all loot of a given level um, is, um, I guess, in terms of uh, item score, the same. Obviously, the stats will be different. It might have yeah. boost to health rather than critical hit chance or something. But in terms of how much it contributes to your power, it's identical. Right. So the only major difference is how it looks. So you've got a lot of freedom to kind of, you know, you can get a full throw set of... Throw the rock, Chris. Come on, just I, throw I'm the just, rock. This is, um, this is me panic running through a fire trap room, what as you can tell. What are you doing? Um, winning at life is one of the things. You're really bad at this. No, I'm really good at this. Die. I actually You're survived this and set a precedent for my entire group getting through this by being an enormous flaming cat. <laughs> I'm still oh. on fire, but I've managed to heal myself. So, um, look, everyone else... Just put the rock down. You don't no, need the rock. I'm about to throw the rock at someone's head. I've got quite attached to this rock. I'm, I'm gonna have, not going to lie. Um, there's a, Actually, we're about to get a, a little a mini event. Okay. Um, so what, what are mini events? So um, the rock this, this event actually does always happen, but there's plenty of events that can happen as you're fighting through a dungeon that may or may not occur, simply to m move things around. In this case, we've had this sort of uh, hole appear in the ground, and these little dudes called Gravelings are about to start running out. Um, I'm going to throw a rock at them, spoilers, um, because that's that's really... There we go. Way uh, That didn't help. But I can now switch to a flamethrower to kind of help close this. Yeah, that rock was rubbish. I the rock was rubbish, but what isn't rubbish is fire. Uh, okay. Uh, Right, so yeah. this this is just a thing that happens. This it's like a, a kind of yeah. Another one of these occurs a little bit later on in this yeah. as a kind of random event. Um, so this is us rapidly trying to hold them back into that hole. You know, one of the, my abilities is painting that firewall. So yeah. hitting that across the entrance is, is really useful. Okay. But about loot, um, it is it's the case that you can get a full set of loot that's completely appropriate for the content you're going to do very quickly, and yeah. you never have to worry about it. If you then want to work your way through the dungeons to get cooler looking stuff, that's what your reward is. Right. Okay. Uh, okay. The the idea, I guess, is that you can't fail content before you've tried it. Yeah. So uh, yeah. that's fair point. That's yeah. Oh, they're good, aren't they? They're they they are clever. Yeah. There's no grinding out fire resistance potions in the wilderness, so that you're allowed to do yeah. a boss. Okay. So um, how long have we got to the next kind of proper boss then? Uh, only a couple of minutes now. Actually, we're we're about to find the Norn lady that we're looking for. Uh, okay. Air Stigalkin, who's actually on the front cover of PC Gamer this month. Oh, she's That's her, the, she, oh, yeah, she's the, nice. The, I like the her. Very tall, redhead woman who has only got half her clothes on. She's um, she's a lady. She's a lady. <laughs> um, Incisive. Shall we talk a little bit about um, how your abilities kind of interact with sure. the? Um, so, if you've got a firewall down, mm -hmm. if they fire magic through your fire, does yeah, it or bullets or or arrows, it, they pick up a fire effect from okay. my firewall. And can you put your turret down in front, like behind your firewall, and then it does? Um, I was wondering about this. My turret, my fire, my rocket turret, I think does. My flamethrower turret doesn't. Well, <laughs> yeah, I suppose you can't really. But add weirdly, fire. you can add incendiary ammo to your flamethrower, which I thought was uh, oh, impressive. Oh, so it's got different ammo sense. types as but, well. Um, that's a particular ability. I mean, most abilities also, like for example, so I've got the flamethrower, and one of the other abilities having the flamethrower gives me anyway is incendiary ammo. So right. I can put incendiary ammo on pistols, but it also does seem to stack with oh. the flamethrower, which doesn't oh. make any sense. But Here we'll comes the lady. Here right, comes so the lady uh, with a brief cutscene. I've seen on the recent cover of PC Gamer. Yeah. Uh, and her dog. 
He was also on the Funko Fusey game. Only on the subscriber edition. Oh, really? The dog is only on the... Well, this is, this is what you're missing if you haven't subscribed. Right, so what's, what's the tactics here? What's, what's going on? We're just killing a dude. Um, okay. Here, I mean, there is a lot of... Um, I think if you're thinking about the tactics in terms of WoW tactics, in terms of preempting what's happening, yeah. then that's not the way to think about it. But the way to think about it is, as the situation changes, what are you doing? Right, okay, so there's a load of... Are they ads, or are they on your side? Um, if you're seeing loads of mesmers, that's because one of the mesmers' abilities is to duplicate themselves. Okay. Um, so that's why occasionally you'll see a triplet cat lady firing a purple laser. Right. As in life. Yeah. <laughs> Indeed. Um, okay, so it looks like she's got a shield up um, for herself. Yeah, there's one mesmer that's thrown up a shield. Uh, well, that be, yeah, that's, that's, They're all yeah, that's got shields. Um, and, and he's dead. And now we've we got go. a cutscene with a nice little work in progress robot. Very much. Ridlock, what are you doing here? I came to stop you. She looks better on our cover. She does look better on our cover, yeah. She still looks pretty good, though. Yeah. I think, don't tell NCSoft, but we slightly changed the colour of the tattoos really? um, to match the colour of the bubble that we had to promote a separate piece of content. I think they'd be really upset if they knew about that. Journalism. Yeah. Okay. Um, so what, what, what's, what's happening here while well, I'm ruining it? Um, well, okay, <laughs> while well, we're ruining it. Um, she's come into the catacombs to find the sword that blew up Guild Wars 1, the city at the beginning uh, of Guild right, War 1. Okay. Um, it's, and uh, Ritlock, the char leader, is, has, has its counterpart. And she's okay. looking for it, and he's cross at her. He's also voiced by Steve Blum, who does almost every deep-voiced character in an RPG ever, including Grunt from Mass Effect and Ogren from Dragon Age. And um, that's why you'll recognise yeah, who he is. My Rex died, so I got Grunt. But everyone gets... No, well, unless you sell him. Anyway, totally irrelevant. Here we okay. go. So, no, we're about to run up the stairs and have a brief cutscene with a ghost. Okay, so we're rocking along. This, um... That's Rob from ArenaNet. <laughs> okay, I love the way the char run. That's really yeah, cool. It is really cool. They uh, they sort of fall into that when they're out of combat. You do get to run normally during combat. Yeah. Because, you know, I carry two guns. That'd be difficult otherwise. Yeah. Okay. A um, little bit of a pause. stand. Pause. Let's have a think about what's going on. Find the lost people. There's some things from MMOs that haven't changed, okay. including... <laughs> Getting lost. I think we have to fight a ghost now, Tim. Okay. This is going to be a break from tradition to fight a ghost. This is probably the first proper boss fight in there. Uh, there's all these like uh, blue flames on the floor. Right. And that's where um, sort of damage is going to start happening. In okay. Um, so there's actually two fights in this arena. So I've so just, you you yeah. so the, before you start, you've just put a turret I've down. Just put, oh, I've, here comes my, some ads. Uh, yeah, and I've just switched and then firewalls up. Oh, we're fine through the firewalls to sort of deal with the oh, ads. You are they doing come some through. some tactics, aren't you? Yeah. I mean. I think the way to think about it is it's very freeform, and initially that can make it feel a little bit... Um, I imagine chaotic. Chaotic, yeah. yeah, definitely. I think they're going for that, actually. And then it's as soon as you start... It's really as soon as start things start going a little bit beyond your control that you start thinking on the fly. It is far more about thinking on the fly than it is about going in, yeah. lecturing everyone about what the plan is, and then doing the plan. My raid leader's going to hate this. He loves those lectures. Yeah. Um, if you like giving speeches, then yeah, unfortunately it's not going to be... Um, the other thing I'm going to say is it's kind of a small thing, but the font for the damage thing is absolutely beautiful. Yeah, it's, like, it's gorgeous. The um, when I was working through the art department, they have a, 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 a little team of people whose only job is to just paint the interface rather than sort of design it. They, you know, it's all beautifully kind of every single icon yeah, for abilities yeah. is all hand drawn really beautifully, and it all paints itself in. It's it's very very pretty. Okay, um, so shall we skip on to the next boss, or because um, it looks like well, actually, we're just about to come up to the point where we have to choose between the three different bosses we're going to take on. Ah, okay. So we might as well flash up some options to skip ahead to each of those. Um, each boss, incidentally, you'll find out after the cutscene you're about to see is, I think, a different class trainer from the beginning okay. of Guild Wars One. Which is quite interesting because so this guy has he summoned a load of ads to start with. Mm -hmm. You kind of burn them down, and then shoot the hell out of him. Until um, yeah, he is about to he's about to drop. Until he's dead. Right oh, a bit of a knockback. Oh, there's a bit of a knockback. I would think. Um, would you recommend playing as an engineer? Um, I'm really enjoying it. I think the only problem with the engineer when I played it was so that your that's your glue. That's yeah. my glue. Yeah. The uh, feedback on on the weapons for the engineer isn't quite satisfying. As some of the other classes, uh, particularly like the thief or okay. the warrior. Um, oh. Here we go. Here's an angry ghost. Enjoy your angry ghost. Oh, have swap positions. Has he got four ears? Uh, no, th there's a horns. Oh no, he does have four ears as well. I do a lot of skipping the cutscenes. Yeah, I mean, you do only play through story mode once. Yeah. 
before getting a different mode. If you if you were to skip it, does the rest of the party have to agree? No, I think you then sit and wait. Oh. Yeah. Get a cup of tea. Do a dance. Yeah, you can't make any. You frighten no one with your meaningless threats. I'm really bored of this, Chris. Okay. More fighting, come on, more fighting. We'll get to fighting. After this, uh, oh no, ghost laugh. Ghost laugh. Angry ghost. Oh. <laughs> Thanks, Air. It's much better when she's on screen. <laughs> Shameless. Shameless. I really like the big cat person, though. It's cool. He is cool, yeah. Sort of adorable. Yeah. So now uh, we have to fight uh, a bunch of different bosses. Basically, we could pick which one we're going to go to first. Okay. Um, we've got sort of three different options. We're going to do them in a particular order because that's the order we would, you know, shown them in. Yeah. But um, we could have done this. A few okay. So ways. what we're going to do is we'll, um, we'll flash up some annotations now so you can see the different boss fights, yeah. and um, we're going to skip ahead. So we will see you at Master Nente. Is his name of the boss we're going to skip to? Okay. Or any of the others if you skip to them. I'll stop talking. Hello, welcome back. We're going to be uh, showing you a fight with a chap called, what was he called? Master Nente. I think I'm just pronouncing that correctly. Okay. Let's get the, uh, the cutscene where he introduces himself. He's in this arena. He's a kind of ranger. I think he was a ranger skill trainer in Guild Wars okay. 1. These are all the ghosts of Guild Wars 1 characters. So, oh, fantastic. Um, so that's who we're murdering. We can't murder a ghost, so it's fine. You can um, decompile a ghost. You can exercise him. You can exercise a ghost. Here we go. We're about to get a little bit of, a little bit of, a little bit of talking. Not very much, though. I hate cutscenes so much. Oh, I, I, I don't remember him, actually. You don't remember him? No. Oh, maybe I don't I'm think I've played as a ranger. Hmm. I like his shoulder pad. This cat person's got better shoulders. True. Can't argue with that. Do cats have shoulders in real life? I imagine so. How else would they let their arms join? Anyway, boss fight. Okay. Um, <laughs> So at the moment he's in the central platform of this sort of circular or semi-circular arena, right? And getting onto that, I've just thrown a rock at him. Hey, um, it's in the tradition there. I put my turret down, so that, I mean I'm a ranged character, so I've got a bit of an advantage here, yeah. Because he's he's doing lots of range damage um, in a kind of area effect around the circle, but I can keep moving ahead of it. Um, ah, and okay. That's why I'm standing nowhere near my turret, so that I'm not, you know, we're not kind of going to lose two things, eggs, two eggs in one basket yeah, yeah, yeah. if we get whacked by AOE. Um, the melee guys are. Um, you can, you know, fully switch to a melee weapon if you've got. I mean, to a ranged weapon if you if you're a melee guy. But in this case, I think so they're kind did of. Did I see a um, platform. I saw a um, like a stick rolling on that you could kind of use to get across. Is that? Yeah, yeah. Is that so right? they do manage to get across there. You see to the to the central platform. That's cool. Um, I'm doing what you know I do best, which is shooting just a gun. Kind of so I'm going to stick over here and about. keep my. There's my. Um, I've just thrown a buff onto the platform in the middle uh, to buff the two guys who just fought the way up there. Um, but mostly I'm just sticking back, making sure yeah. my turrets stay up. Um, I haven't thrown down my flame turret, obviously, because it would have been out of range. I think you should ask the um, little redhead lady to do something. Yeah, she's not helping, nor is her dog. However, he is about to teleport oh. onto the platform we're on. Ah, which okay. I have helped by throwing glue, glue at him again. It's one of my main tricks, is throwing glue at people. Mm, like unlimited a, supply like, of glue. Like a primary school child. So, um, he's coming in, she's she's kind of holding him in yeah, position. I guess, yeah, I'm that's gonna, just a sort of like, coincidence the NPC happens yeah, okay. to be doing that. Um, these ba these boss, boss fights, like all the boss fights in Guild Wars, are very freeform. You can pull them completely out of their area if you're capable of doing that. He has this particular thing where he teleports back to his platform, so that kind of makes it harder with him. Do you have to go through like a loading screen to get to the um, into the dungeon? Yes, this oh, is an so instance. There are okay. there are dungeons out in the wild that are not instances at all that you just walk so into. So if I wanted to, um, you're saying I could drag a um, boss into the capital city. It would be hard. There'd be lots of guards on the way, and uh, okay. like you'd, you'd struggle, I think, to get him past. Yeah, but I think I'd, I'd I'd figure out a way. Life will find a way. It's it's the ultimate troll, so we'll. we'll in the words try. of Jeff Goldblum, life will find a way yeah. to pull the boss into the capital city. For lols. <laughs> so here we are, kind of DPSing, trying to take him down. Um, he will teleport back to the central platform in a minute. So this fight is very much about kind of trying to keep your balance between ranged and melee. Because when he's on the central platform, ranged is sort of um, really, really useful. And melee is quite vulnerable because they're yeah, yeah, yeah. right in range of him. Um, whereas uh, when he moves back down, range of him is very careful. One of your guys just stay over on that platform. I think one of them did. Yeah, I think I think oh, actually Rob and the Mesmer um, stuck over there. Well, Mesmer's can do a bit of melee and a bit of range, so right. it makes actually sen makes sense yeah. for him to kind of hold down one position where he can do both, and that, to be honest, is the middle. Um, okay. And one of your guys is pretty close to death, actually, little lady. Yeah, 
Oh, well, no, she's got heal. When you run out of health in Guild Wars, you don't die straight away. You go knocked down. It's kind of like um, a kind of holdout position or yeah. something like that. And you, you then have, a, a, you'll see it later because it does happen to me. Um, you but call you in get a medic. four abilities based on what your class is. Okay. Um, like, one of them is just throwing rocks at people. But um, if you can kill an enemy while you're down, you come back to life. And if one of your right. teammates can come over and get you, you come back to life. So okay. it's actually much more similar to, to be honest, like something oh, like for Dead than, yeah, so than it's, um, uh, an MMO. Okay, so you get a um, you get a resurrection if you kill an enemy while you're down. Yeah. Oh wow, that's so cool. So that adds a bit of strategy in terms of like you know if you can save one ad that has very little health and just leave them yeah, there, yeah. very little health, it can almost be like a little a little little health packet. If you should fall over, there he goes. He's about to about to kill this ghost. Uh, oh, I'm going to kill this ghost with fire. Is is how I've opted to do that. Thank you, Burn. Right. So the loot you got some gold, some blue pants, and, and some, some meat to salvage, some metal scraps. Yeah, some meat for the crafting. And there's another loot. loot chest here. There was a little bit of a bug while we were playing this where I'm actually getting loot from that, but it's not popping up. It's going okay. straight into my inventory. So how does the loot sharing work? Everyone gets their own loot. Everyone gets a piece of loot. Separate lo loot tables for everybody. No, it's like you get a separate pile based on just for you. Because there's no because there's no need for this character needs this item or they're not going to be able to do things. Yeah. Um, everyone can just sort of... Um, to be honest, that's the key to the whole thing because that's why they can build boss battles that can be exploited. Yeah. Because it's not about... Um, it's not about... Sort of, you're you're succeeding because succeeding is fun and you get rewards, but you're not succeeding because if you don't succeed, you don't get to do the next thing. Okay, well I'll tell you what, let's skip to the, let's next, skip box. the next boss. Boss fight. Um, what's he called? I've completely forgotten. She is a necromancer lady who I think whose name might be Vassa. Okay, well but it might be completely. Wrong. Okay, so welcome back. We're about to fight Vassa. Or Kasha. It I says V in the corner. It's a V. No, that's a different boss. I think it's we're about to fight Kasha. Oh, Kasha Blackblood. That's the one. Okay. So this room looks like it's a trap. Yeah, it's always a trap, Tim. And this is a necromancer. And as with necromancers, it's a trap. That's what they say. Okay. Angry ghost, angry ghost. Why are you here? Blah, blah, angry ghost. I hope people don't think I'm impatient. I'm not impatient. I just like I'm in it for the fighting, and I've read that bit now. Mm, true. Right. So uh, put some. So I'm whacking my flame turret down right in the middle. Uh, okay. So her big thing is she's going to spawn loads and loads and loads of ads, and if her ads get close to her, they top up her health. She okay. Sacrifices them to heal herself. So you see these little little fiery dudes. Yeah. This is why in this fight all I'm going to do is run around my flamethrower, cleaning up these little ads because everyone yeah. else can concentrate DPS on the boss. I'm just going to, and I didn't ask that you know this was the best thing to do. This just sort of instinct, instinctively felt yeah. like the, uh, the the way to win this, and that I had the best AOE or sort of mass yeah. mob handling ability. Um, you know, so I just used the um, like an air blast, like almost like a pyro to, to knock them all yeah, away yeah. from me. Because I can't. But I think you much. actually knocked them all to her. Well, you see, that you see, what the, thing the game is supports is a certain level of incompetence. You're that, just um, a bad player. Cause I'm just I'm, I'm bad at this. Oh, she's done a poison, it looks like? That's like a poison, yeah. I mean, Gil is very good at kind of showing you where the radius yeah. of area effect stuff is, because it's very important to get out of the way of that. In fact, that's one of the ways they kind of add a lot of um, a lot, add a lot to boss fights with this need to keep moving. Yeah. Um, some of those will be mine, of course, when I'm just throwing down. There we go, fire. I'm just going to set things on fire for a bit. This boss fight actually went pretty well for our group. We... Uh, she so it looks like a right. fear. That was a fear for her. I think she sends up these ads that then turn around. And then you put your back. flame wall down. Right on her, actually, I think, to try and stop her own ads getting back to her. Okay, oh, that's clever, actually. Yeah. So so there thinking on the fly, thinking on my feet with fire. I think on your paws, more like. Yeah, indeed. But you notice I put my rocket turret out to one side where it's unlikely to get sort of bothered. Yeah. Um, whereas my flame turret, I think I had to replace it a few times in this fight. Um, I just keep chucking down right in the middle because it's it's a good distraction. Is she there pulling I down things from owners oh no, is that your supply that drop? That was my supply drop. Um, so one of those is a healing turret, one of those is a rocket a rifle turret. And oh, you've got a healing pack. turret? Uh, yeah, it's it's something I hadn't actually unlocked but is included in the, the sort of orbital drop. <laughs> right. So, yeah. Um, who is actually dropping these things out of the sky? If you start to ask questions like that, Tim, uh, a lot of the uh, a lot of the the the, uh, the magic will be will be gone. Okay. Um, the abilities they they're not too concerned with abilities that um, sort of make sense if you think about them beyond yeah. a certain amount. But okay. they add a lot to the game gameplay wise. I think that's the, the most important yeah. thing. I mean, Guild Wars One was never a game about you know a strict verisimilitude in terms of you know 
sword yeah. fighter. Okay, right, so we almost got him down. Uh, did you find these ads hard to deal with? Um, only when they got like this, li this little bugger. Um, Do they explode you know, or something? Uh, really? No, it's just that I can't take very many hits at all. Um, okay. I'm quite a bit of a glass cannon. Um, and so I, I'm, ha I'm fine if they're kind of just, if they're, you know, running towards the boss, say, yeah. and I can set them on fire. But if I get too much attention, then you will especially on a few occasions the mesmers help me out if I get too much attention. Yeah. It looks like um, it's fairly tough. I think it's, it's yeah, cool. there's the next the next boss certainly is um, this one. Actually, was one of our quicker takedowns. She's right. She's just about to drop. Um, I think we were well equipped to deal with ads. What we weren't equipped to deal with was single, very tough enemies, which you're about yeah. to see. There we go, and that's another. Um, that's another dead boss. Right. Dead so boss. I guess we are moving to. Uh, we're going to make the pair of bosses, uh, which are Relina and Vassa. Now, okay. the actual Vassa, um, which is only a few minutes ahead. But uh, see you there. Right, hello, here we go. You've got a giant pit, and apparently there's a pair of bosses in there. Yeah, is that so right? this boss is just teleporting in now from her coffin, as ghosts are wont to do. Uh, nice. So this is a pair of bosses who I believe were a couple in, in Guild Wars 1, and the closer they are together, the more powerful they become. So uh, one of them, this tactics. one, the, the lady is a Mesmer. She's very, very, very powerful. Lots of big AoE. The, uh, the dude is a melee character. I'm not sure exactly what class he is, but he uh, he's, uh, does sort of big AOE damage, so I've whacked down my turret. So the trick to this, apparently, according to the developers, is to separate them within this arena. And you'll right. see it won't quite go to plan, actually. Um, so so a few the, the one on the left at the mo so moment... That guy who's just run at me is the melee guy, and the one yeah. sided by Purple Madness is uh, the... Oh, I can, yeah, and they've got like hearts above them saying... Yes, yeah, we, so we we like when they're close to each other, that's the buff they give each other. They are right. very tough. Um, you'll actually notice underneath any enemy in Guild Wars, there's a few lines of text. Yeah. Under the health bar, and that explains their kind of key features. And with these ones, it actually does explain that as well. Oh, I see. Yeah. So she she casts lightning, summons stuff, and is stronger next to her counterpart. Very so smart. Very smart. And um, so you'll see. And you're getting your ass kicked. We are getting our asses kicked. So she threw down a big AOE storm and took out most Ooh. of us. I managed to dodge well out of the way, but I'm crippled. Um, and now you're crippled. Yeah. So uh, and now I'm down, and you'll see I've got my abilities at the bottom. So I'm throwing rocks at her now. That's not helping. <laughs> um, my abilities are: um, I've got a grappling hook, which pulls enemies towards me. I can blow up a bomb, take off a bit of my own health, but do damage to enemies around me. So it's a self-sacrifice thing. Yeah. And the final one is call for help, which causes my health to decrease slower, but means I can't do the others. Right. Um, so now I'm down. And you'll when you wipe in Guild Wars, the encounter doesn't reset. Okay. So it doesn't just go back to normal, and you do it again. You go back to a waypoint, which we're about to do, and you'll, you'll see that in a sec. Yeah. Um, you'll notice Ritlock here is about to just fall over repeatedly for no apparent reason. That looks so like a bug. Yep, yeah, it is beta. Um, and we're going to all spawn back at the nearest waypoint, which is sort of where we fought the last boss, and run back to the fight. But the encounter is basically still going. So, you know, a death can be incorporated into a fight quite easily. Right, so... Um Oh, okay. You, you know, in any other in any other game, it would be considered sort of res grinding and, and sort of running back, but um, it is actually part of the fight. And you notice it affects this fight hugely because of what's about to happen. Okay. Um, that's really like falling over again. Doing a running thing. So, but also the damage to the health is persistent. So, so yeah, the progress you've made it is maintained. Although we right. didn't make very much progress. And see, they're about to chase us into this corridor, and this is a huge problem. This is the way we came in, and we actually opened a secret door to get in here um, by putting a rock on a pressure switch. Right. And the problem is, in a corridor, well, yeah, yeah, they, we they're just going to be right next to each other. Aren't so they? you'll notice. Well, now what we're doing is we change the tactics completely on the fly, and we're just fighting this reverse. Back, we're just backing off, basically, trying to stay at range because of those big overlapping AOE things that are coming in. Oh, so you're screwed. We, you're really bad at this, Chris. You get well, with the group. I am with the group. Okay, you should be kicked out and get someone else to do it. That's not fair, Tim. <laughs> That's not fair. Look, look, look! How much glue I'm shooting. Look how. Look, at, oh, is anyone else contributing glue? <laughs> I don't think no. they are. Okay. Um, Sorry, you. that's right. The, the magic guys seem much better than you. So you got one <laughs> guy down. Thank you. Uh, you're pretty low on health. Um, uh, but it health. looks like you've knocked one of the guys down. You've got. We've got. We know we're that, a load of those um, enemies you're seeing are actually illusory you've, you've, you've enemies that she's creating. Barely made a chink in her armor well, or health. If only we were to do something dazzlingly clever in a minute, Tim, and turn this whole thing around, that would be brilliant, wouldn't it? If that, that would happened. be interesting. Well, let's wait and see. Shall we? So anyway, so we're actually losing people, but we're resing coming back or managing to pick each other up. Right. So, so it looks like someone's just—is that the um, Ritlock guy and who's kind of tanking of them on his own? One of our friendly guys just tried to run back into the arena to right. pull them um, 
back into their own boss spawn area. Oh, but NPC. No, no, not NPC, and a player. Oh, it was okay. a decent idea, trying to get them out of the corridor. Yeah. But this kind of backwards march is, is, is kind of inevitable at this point. So yeah. um, I have to lock down my turrets, trying to hold them as much as we can. I think the idea at this point was... You are kind of chipping away at what, at least one of them. Yeah, we can fight AoE with AoE here and, and just hold, you know, if, if we're bunched together taking loads of hits, then at least they might as well be. So that's the kind of the plan at the moment. And it doesn't sound like a particularly good plan. It was the best we could do. I mean, we were all in the same room when we were doing this and sort of yelling at each other, uh, trying to turn yeah. this thing around. So here we'll res a few people. I've just thrown down my oh, you're, supply you're drop. pretty low. Uh, but we've got one person up, so that's a good thing. One person just decided to run back. You'll see them floating health packets off to the left as well, which I've just laid down for them to pick up. Okay. Um, and we're gonna oh, cool. You can just drop down pickups. That's an engineer thing. That's pretty um, and they just act like health pickups in any game. Okay, yeah. and you're going to die? Uh, you yes, die? I think I probably am. Actually, no, I think I actually... Oh, 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 tumble, run, tumble, run. So anyway, blue. Always so blue. these lines that are coming out, is that where it's bad to stand? Uh, white is okay, red is bad. Okay. Um, so I'm just resing someone else. Yeah. And this is the big door that we opened with a secret pressure switch. Okay. Right. So right now, we didn't actually know this would happen, and apparently the developers didn't know this would happen, but we're about to pull them through the door actually into the previous boss's arena. So yeah. This is what I mean when I say boss fights really aren't constrained to a particular yeah. particular way of doing things. So here we are, I've just thrown my buffs down, we're going to keep the, the fire up, and um, in a second you'll notice I actually managed to miss the whole thing by getting knocked backwards in the brilliant journalistic move. <laughs> but, um, but I can tell you what happened. Right. So. Turrets, turrets, turrets. You know, also, the Guardian just used a, a pull ability to kind of pull the melee boss towards him. Yeah. Um, so the idea at this point, I think we had deliberately decided, well, swap one boss arena for another, and actually we need to separate them somewhere. Let's fight them in the other room. Yeah. Um, which is, I think, it's, it's cool. The game lets you do that. So anyway, here we go. Fighting them in here now. We've got a bit more room to move. You might have line of sight issues here. Then. Well, it's also cover. True. Well, cover? Can you, can you use cover? Yes, absolutely. Cool. Um, so I'm about to get, oh, oh, oh dear, run, hide, hide. Hide behind hide the thing. man. So I, I, I hide here for a bit, like a, <laughs> like a brave man, at which point we managed to figure out how to close the door. Thus, oh. trapping the bosses on either side of the door. <laughs> Excellent. Oh, very so clever. So I'm actually about to, I think I'm about to go down here, but I run back straight away. But right in front of me is a boulder, and that boulder is actually on the press switch. But we get, okay, so we just opened it again by accident. You notice female Char is standing on the button there. Yeah. You just see the button and holding it shut at that point. So the idea was, okay, we've done something. Apparently no one's ever done this before. Trap the bosses on either side of the door, kill one of them, then pull the other one through. The Which I think is really clever. They, they'll they definitely redesign that so you can't do that again. Well, they don't have to. That's the great thing about it is uh, when this stuff happens, they can you know call it a feature. So we've just taken the rock yeah. off. Because, because you know... These oh, oh, she's hungry. Yeah, you've, she's killed, hungry. you've killed a lover. We've killed a lover, but now we've got loads of room which to fight her. Which is, you know, something... Yeah. Different. And I think the real strength of Guild Wars is that they don't have to fix that stuff. Yeah. In WoW, you'd have to. In this, it's fun. I mean, it is more can fun. I, can I make a suggestion when you play? Is that if the white stuff is, is good for you, mm -hmm. stay in the white stuff? It's not good for us necessarily. It's just friendly AoE. Uh, okay. no, it's not like a healing. It's 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 where our attacks are going. Oh, uh, okay. Right. Um, I think, anyway. I might be wrong about that. In some cases, it might be bad. I think, I'm think i wondering if you're just kind of standing outside of a buff because you don't have a, as many buffs as anyone else. Also, I'm, I'm rubbish at this, as we established. Okay. Um, so, eventually, I, I presume you win. We do, yeah. We do now have to fight her by herself, but yeah, it is pretty It is pretty straightforward. But you'll notice we are now fighting her in the previous boss's chamber. Okay. Well, I'll tell you what, we'll uh, let you watch the rest of this. Um, uh, hopefully you enjoyed this little look at... Um, what was the dungeon called? There's, uh, well, there's one more boss after this, too. Is there? Yeah, oh, wow. Well. The last boss after this, uh, okay. who is the King Ghost himself. All right. Skip ahead to that. Well, shall we skip, skip to the... Um, gosh, I got very confused. Hi everyone, we're back at um, in Guild Wars Land, and we're about to fight the final boss. Well, Chris is about to fight the final boss. Yeah. Um, this is the King of the Ghosts. King so Alban. he's he's the guy who stabbed that sword in in Guild Wars One. Yeah, in Guild Wars One, everything, and the cutscene in Guild Wars Two that we just watched. Indeed. Okay, so some chat. A little bit of chat, a little bit of pre-ghost fighting chat. He's not as good as Casper, is he? His uh, his motivation is pretty much vengeance. Okay. Okay, so this. So is he pulls enemies close and summons. Faux fire, which is the kind of apocalyptic flame thing in Guild Wars 1. Okay. So this is a big load of AoE. It looks like the um, place where you fought one of the last bosses. Because it is. Okay. Uh, it's back in the centre. It's, it's where we kind of first chatted to him before we went off to fight the other bosses. We kind of right. returned to the centre from the very, very end. Um, so you'll notice this is a pretty 
it's basically this this fight is about staying alive yeah um, and sort of dealing with a pretty tremendous amount of AoE damage uh, which I'm trying to counterbalance by setting fire to things why has he got a skull above his head why has he got a skull above his head yeah I think he's been target marked don't hold me to that I believe he's been marked by the dev okay as in a, you know in a, their most yeah. whack a target yeah, yeah. either that or it's just because he's a badass it does look quite hard. He's kicking the Guardian's ass at the moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah that'll happen. Um, but you know, we are whittling him down um, fairly quickly. This fight was um, pretty touch and go, actually, which is worth pointing out. We were doing this in the same room as another team doing exactly the same thing at exactly the same time. And while it wasn't a race, it was totally a race. <laughs> um, it's always a race. And at this point, uh, between, the two, between the two groups, th we were completely neck and neck. Um, and uh, without spoiling it too much, we, did, we lost by about eight seconds. So, uh, which says, if nothing else, um, Dungeon's quite consistently paced. Yeah. Even when you do crazy things with doors. So, I there's lots kind of ice coming down from the sky. Is that ice or is it kind of I think it's, I think demon it's, it's, fire? I think it's magic fire. Okay. Is there any way to dodge that or is it just um, a just kind getting of getting out of the way. Like, um, you know, you've got a dodge roll, which you'll okay. see me do a few times. Actually, it's worth pointing out on the interface. The bar on the right hand side, uh, beyond the health, above the ability is the uh, to pale yellow bar. That is my current amount of sort of energy for dodging. Okay. So that regenerates, but it means you can't dodge indefinitely. So you do have to kind of time it. Oh, we've just all been pulled in and uh, murdered. I think there we go. Damn. So I'm now throwing rocks at a ghost. He's a bad, isn't he? Yeah. So the red health bar. When the health bars are red, that means that the person is down and needs resurrecting. Yes, yeah, so that's how much. That's how much kind of like floor yeah. health they have. Okay. Or how much time they have. Before you and but so you've gone you're running out yeah dead and the guy the guardian's dead as well but you can respawn oh. there's a spawn point right near this boss fight um when you finish the dungeon but like you're this, green now what's going on there uh is that a bug i'm not on that this are you looking on the health bars on the oh side? yeah that's oh. not me that's the other that's oh. the other chart well i'm very silly uh, my right. health bar is the one so the you're gonna have a run back and um, go quick run back little pounce back i can help I can honest help. i'm so, a cat I with mean, some these, guns these Dungeons are actually balanced with the idea that you will run back in yeah. mind. Like that's it's is kind of factored in. Um, the when you've finished a dungeon like this one, you then unlock exploration mode, which is a lot more freeform and a hell of a lot harder. Where running back is a lot less preferable. You'll notice um, above the uh, energy bar to the right of my health is a little uh, red shield. Yeah. And that means my equipment is breaking. And after a certain amount of deaths, my equipment yeah. will break. Um, at which point, it is actually removed from your character, which leads to dungeons going very wrong, being attempted by people with no pants. Um, but that means that's that, that that is the kind of the end game where oh. you need to go and repair. I mean, if you're gonna if you're gonna confront a dungeon, you should definitely wear pants. trousers. Trou yeah, trousers are are essential regardless of whether or not you're facing the foe fire. I well, think. I think I I wouldn't say trousers. I mean, I've I've confronted many dungeons in my pants before, but um, <laughs> you know, uh, you you do need Press the pants. Trip. Yeah. <laughs> Um, no, I'm, I'm kind of more thinking so about So I'm going to res this person and uh, fail horribly. You can actually res dead people as well, like even if they're, uh, he, he chose to respawn, uh, but I could have resed him and that yeah. prevented a bit of damage to his pants. Um, but we are about to uh, kill a ghost now, which um, I'm always fond of doing. Um, and you'll notice in a, in a brilliant feat of heroics, which is completely fitting for how heroic I was on average, I'm going to defeat this ghost while lying on my ass. <laughs> brilliant. Like, right, right, he's got the last Death. of health, I'm dead. I'm going to throw a rock. Oh no. <laughs> rock, rock, throw the rock, rock throw will the rocks do it. At the ghost. Throw the rocks at the ghost king, and then, oh, oh no, I'm dead. Oh, you're dead. Wait for it, wait for it, wait for it. I don't want to respawn because actually, we win. Hooray, and you get a nice cutscene. Well, that looked like a lot of fun. Um, I look forward to playing it um, yeah. quite a lot. Uh, we've got plenty more Guild Wars videos coming, and uh, if you enjoyed it, please do subscribe to our channel. Um, and you can press various buttons on screen now to do other things. Indeed, the internet. Uh, thank you. Goodbye. Bye.